My name is Jessica. I am the Assistant Director in Charge of the Holloman Health Innovation Challenge here at the Burke Center for Entrepreneurship. Um, I also run the graduate programs for the Burke Center, so if you have any questions in that realm, feel free to email me after. But I'd rather get to jump right into what you're all here to talk about today, which is indeed the Health Innovation Challenge. Um, this will be the seventh year of the Health Innovation Challenge. And as you can probably guess, it's a prototyping and innovation competition focused on healthcare. Um, judges in two rounds will ask you questions about your market, your potential impact of your innovation. And this is a, you probably all know this coming to the session, but this is a fantastic time to be innovating in healthcare. There is a desire for new approaches to both healthcare delivery and service because of COVID, things that have highlighted over telehealth and addressing access disparities. Um, there's been novel enabling technologies that have emerged in the last few years, you know, least of which are mRNA vaccines, but you're also talking about, you know, AI and machine learning, um, the event of genomics and big data, CRISPR, there's a whole bunch of techniques that are just ready to be applied in new and exciting ways. Um, and finally, there's a lot of investment around right now. Um, last year, it was about $30 billion um, through September of 2021 have been invested in this industry with almost $900 million being invested in the Seattle area alone. So it's definitely an area that's, that's hot and, and looking for innovation from teams like you. So jumping into the eligibility criteria, uh, requirements for the competition, um, the challenge is open to any student, undergraduate or graduate student who is in good standing in a degree seeking program um, from a college or university in the Cascadia corridor. So what that means is that if you're an enrolled student in any college in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, British Columbia or Alaska, um, you're eligible to participate. Um, and with your project, it's any project um, product process service that highlights a new approach to wellness, to healthcare and treatment, or to safety and access. Um, I take a very broad look at what thing, what that means, so what healthcare means. So we're talking everything from medical devices and actual therapeutics to digital health solutions, behavioral interventions, services, anything under the sun that could improve human health is something I want to see in the challenge. Um, and because it is a regional competition, you're also encouraged to create teams with um, friends from all schools um, in the eligible region. So onto the challenge itself. The challenge itself uh, takes place over two rounds. The initial application, for those of you who haven't uh, logged on to our application website um, to check it out, is a five to seven page business summary. And we call it a business summary rather than a business plan because we're not looking at this stage for your five-year financials. I'm not looking for your hockey stick projections. What, what I really wanna know is what is your technology or your innovation? Can you make it? How is it going to make an impact and who's going to buy it? So I want you to paint a picture of your idea um, and how is it actually going to come from your idea into reality? So the, from the initial application pool, that's the screening round, your application will be reviewed by a team of five to seven judges who will always give you feedback on your idea. And then from the initial pool, the top 20 or 21 teams move forward to our final round. Uh, for this round, teams submit a one-page business summary, just a shorter version of that first summary to kind of serve as a hook for judges and during that round, as well as a one-minute pitch that you would deliver live to our judges. And you'll also be preparing a booth and a demo of your prototype um, to show off and, and give more details to the judges about your idea. From there, as I mentioned, we have judges come and in talk to you, see your prototype and decide our winners. These judges are members of Puget Sound's entrepreneurial life science and healthcare ecosystems. They are entrepreneurs in our own right, often alumni from our own competitions. They're investors, attorneys, engineers, practicing health professionals. Um, and these judges are vetted by our staff for their experience and expertise. Um, and to be noted that current faculty staff and students um, at UW are not eligible to judge. And these people, you know, we bring them in from the community to give you feedback on your idea. You know, they are professionals. They've done this before, a lot of them. And it's one of the big benefits of entering this competition um, is to just meet these people and network with them and, and really get their ideas and their um, feedback and often, you know, leaving the competition, whether it's from the screening round or the final round with their contact information and ways to follow up is one of the biggest benefits of participating in this process. 
Of course, the other benefit of participating in this process is the potential to win prizes. Um, we award $40,000 um, in prize money every year for the HIC. The top prize is uh, $15,000, with second being ten, dollars and third place being $5,000. We also offer best idea prizes. I don't know why that's advancing. I apologize. We also offer $2,500 best idea category prizes. These prizes are um, for specific categories and like, and you know, subject areas that you might be focused in. And this year we're focusing on best idea for a medical device, for digital health innovation, uh, and we're returning the pandemic preparedness prize as well as uh, addressing health access and disparities prize. And as I mentioned, regardless of whether or not you were one of our uh, monetary prize winning team, every team receives feedback on their idea from our judges, um, either written or in person. So I want to highlight, you know, where exactly can you go from participating in the competition by just talking through some of our past winners. Some of you may have heard of A Alpha Bio. Um, they recently just raised a $20 million Series A financing round um, for their innovation. They competed at both the Health Innovation Challenge and the Dempsey Startup Competition back in 2018. Um, and the student who took this out, you know, is still the CEO. He was a graduate student at the time from the um, Institute for Protein Design, and they've gone on to partner with the Gates Foundation and with other companies in the area, particularly on, on COVID. Another um, competitor you may have heard of is Nanodropper. They also competed in 2018 in, in the Health Innovation Challenge and went on to win um, the next year. They came back to the Health Innovation Challenge, incorporating all of the feedback that they received and um, you know, won the Health Innovation Challenge. And now they're, they're shipping a FDA approved product for adjusting uh, the size of droplets out of eyedropper bottles to help conserve medication. Um, and they raised a you know, new grant from the, uh, from the Air Force to work with the Air Force and also a $1.4 million seed financing round. For those teams who move forward from the screening round to the final round, we offer a resource night to help kind of um, give tips and tricks for hosting your booth. And then uh, we do a pitch workshop as well, where you bring in a panel of local entrepreneurs and speakers to help kind of refine that 60 second pitch because it is not a lot of time to deliver what can be a lot of information. And I'll, of course, you can always reach out to me with questions about eligibility, um, either of your, your project or of your you know, student status. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I can't give specific application reviews, but anything beyond that is, is pretty much open game. So just a quick uh, run through of the schedule. If you don't know it already, the deadline to enter is this is Monday, January 31st by noon. The screening round will happen um, that week between February 2nd and February 9th. We send the applications out to the screening round judges. Finalist teams will be notified on February 10th. And then the final round will be held on March 3rd. Um, I, of course, I have to give a plug for um, the other competitions we host this year. Um, we have the Environmental Innovation Challenge, and I think for a lot of people who have more uh, population health or environmental health-based innovation, it's absolutely a challenge that you should look into. Um, anything that can have an impact on sustainability. Um, I know that medical waste is a huge problem if anyone is tackling that one. Single use um, is great for sterility, not so great for the environment. So if anyone is tackling medical waste, I would absolutely look at the Environmental Innovation Challenge. And then later on in spring quarter, we host the Dempsey Startup Competition. It is the 25th year of that competition, um, and it is open to any and all verticals, any sort of innovation uh, business models, welcome to apply for the Dempsey. And we give out, um, it's a five round competition that gives out about $90,000 a year. So it's also one to keep in mind on. And, and honestly, people who come through the Health Innovation Challenge get all of that feedback and can carry it right into Dempsey. It makes you a really good candidate for the Dempsey. I'd highly recommend it. Um, and with that, I am at the end of my slideshow, but I'm more than Happy to take any questions. Oh, I see one question in the chat. Did the whole team need to have student status? No, the whole team does not. So in that case, we call your non-student team members um, our student advisors. So the majority of the work must be done by students. So students have to pitch. Students should be answering questions at your booth. Um, students should do the, the writing um, of your business summary. But you can have non-student team members um, and, you know, be on your team. They just, the student team member should be doing the vast majority of the work.
forgot to mention, which is that only students can receive prize money. Um, so that will have to be a conversation with any non-student team members that you have. We can only um, give prize money to students. Like how much fidelity is needed in the financials? Not as much as you would need for Dempsey. You know, you want to have kind of a basic cost, you know, analysis just to show that, you know, this is something that you could actually make at a price that would be, a, you could sell it at, you know, like if you have this great product, but you can't get, you know, it's going to cost a million dollars for someone to buy it. That's not a feasible business model, but I don't need to know, like, you know, what your staff salaries are going to be from year one to year five or your okay. overhead or, you know, that, that I don't need. I, I need kind of that basic overall market analysis of, yes, this is a feasible business. Um, question from the chat. Are you able to disclose how many people applied to the competition previous years? Yeah, I, we do. I think last year, which of course was a COVID year, so it's a little bit of an asterisk. We had, I believe, around 36 applications um, last year. And, you know, uh, previous years, we'd probably have between 40, 45 applications. Are you able to disclose how many are, um, like, from the states versus from BC and if that affects uh, anything to do with the eligibility of being successful in the competition? It's a little bit of a trick question because the regional aspect of it was kind of, it was a recent expansion. So it's only been in the last few years that we've opened it up. Um, so I'd say the vast majority of our applicants are, are still from the states, but I wouldn't say that that impacts, uh, people don't tend to favor, say I would favor say local teams. You know, it really is based on the the strength of the idea and the strength of business plan. Um, I wouldn't say that, you know, just because you're from, from Vancouver, that would put you at a disadvantage. Um, we, we definitely, and even last year, there was, I can think of at least one team who made it to the final round last year, who was from, um, I believe, UVic. What are some common pitfalls that you see in these applications? I think one thing to make sure is understanding at least the basics of how working in the healthcare system works. I think for people, particularly who are, who are thinking of selling it to hospital systems, if, if you have more of a direct to consumer sort of product, it's, it's a different story. Um, but I've seen a lot of teams who, you know, they get the question of who's going to buy this. And the answer they come up with is the doctors. And at least in the US healthcare system, that's not usually true. Um, usually it's some, you know, third floor hospital administrator who works with the budget, you know, like there, there's a whole lot of regulatory things that go into it and, and knowing at least the basics of how that system works is very helpful. Um, if you're looking at, at a very, um, you know, like insurance, if you're looking to get reimbursed by health insurance, for instance, um, and things like that, I think that's a major pitfall, um, cause healthcare is a very complicated system. <laughs> um, and and can be tricky if you're if you're not used to working in it. Um, I think sometimes software engineers have that problem too, um, and that app development in most sectors is a very rapid, you know, iteration sort of. Um, it's a rapid iteration session. But for healthcare, to my knowledge, there's only two apps that have received FDA approval as actual treatment. Um, it's a very much a growing field. I actually ran an entire workshop in the fall around uh, digital health innovation because it's still very much a growing field. And so that's another thing where you have to kind of understand it's a little bit of a moving target at the moment. And, you know, knowing that and knowing kind of the pitfalls of development, you know, shows that you've done the research and you've done the work and, and you understand what you're getting yourself into. Jessica, curious what... Um... Where's that prize money coming from? Is this grant funded? Mm -mm. Nope. No, we uh, we just cut a check. Uh, so this oh. these these the competitions are entirely sponsored, um, either through direct sponsorship or or through endowments. And so we're able to just write a check to student teams. Um, this is we don't take any equity, we don't take any board seat. This is this is money solely for your use. A lot of people put it forward um, towards the team, you know, to help move their team forward. Um, you know, they can turn over to the company. That's a conversation um, we encourage team members to have early with what they want to do with the money. But, you know, we don't put any strings on it. Um, it's not a grant. It's not, you know, a stock based thing. It's just a check. There's no concerns over IP, I presume. Like if you present something and you were to win uh, prize money, like it's fully 
the student's ownership. There's nothing to do with it being looped into um, the University of Washington or UW. No, we don't take any, you know, equity IP stake at all in what comes to the competitions. You know, we do, um, we don't require the judges to sign, you know, like an NDA or anything like that to, to participate, but they do operate under an understanding of confidentiality um, that the materials that they receive and that, you know, what they see in the live round, um, you know, are confidential materials that they shouldn't be shared, um, but they don't sign an NDA. Um, and, you know, it's kind of, Part of the challenge is, is to learn how to talk about your technology without revealing everything.